Hey there. I recently picked up some Dirty Down Rust and thought I'd sit down with a camera and get to grips with it. I had a fair few questions about how exactly this product works and thought I'd share with you my trial and error experimentation. My aim here is to save you making all the same mistakes I did and work out how and if you want to integrate this product into your hobbying. This is a pretty long video for me and there's a fair few sections, so I'll include time codes down in the description for if you want to skip around. I've edited it down as much as possible, but there's a fair amount of footage, so I won't take it personally if you don't want to watch it all. I began my dirty down rust adventures on some old terrain I wasn't super happy with, hoping to improve its overall appearance. So here's me from the past. So for this first test, I'm gonna try and build up rust in a fairly plain corner by stippling it with a pretty fat brush. So here we go. From what I understand, this dries fairly quickly. So I'm going in pretty light. Just going, you see it's oranging quite nicely. Looking all right already. Going back after just a few seconds, trying to build that up. See what that looks like. Could have maybe done with leaving it for longer. It looks like I'm disturbing what's underneath already. And now that's dried, you can see there's actually a, there's a decent amount of variation there for the amount of work I did. Go from pretty dark to kind of orangey and a little bit lighter. I'm quite impressed with, uh, with that effect. Now I'm gonna load this brush up a lot more. See that nice little glob there. And I'm gonna splodge it on a lot heavier into this corner down here. Has a little bit of streak and grind, but nothing too crazy. Try and get that right in there. Let me go back in to this corner, see what we can do. So I'm trying to stick to that stippling motion, I will try brushing in a bit. Now it's dried. To be honest, it's not really to my tastes. Having it that little bit thicker on there actually makes it look more uniform and less interesting. Like to me, that's a little bit plain red and a little bit jarring. It's not quite such a natural effect as the lighter stippling that we had previously. So I think being conservative with this stuff when it's just neat straight out the pot might be the way to go. Now it's looking a little bit more transparent than I actually anticipated as well. So I'm gonna start going over this rust here, which is uh, a lot more orange than I'd like it to be. We'll see what that looks like. Trying to stay mostly within the boundaries I've set for myself previously. We'll just see how transparent this stuff is just neat out of the, uh, out of the pot. Look, we got a bit down here as well, so a little bit in there. Now that one, I've gone a little bit over what I, I like ideally, so I'm gonna get my brush a little bit moist, the excess water on some tissue. And then if I go back in with a damp brush, I'm gonna see if I can feather the edge slightly. See, it's quite thick. You can see I'm actually pushing it, which isn't ideal. I think it's going to create a bit of an edge. Just try and feather it slightly. I think I might just be making things worse, to be honest. So let's just try. Oh dear. And again, we'll see how that dries. Now it's had time to dry. As anticipated, the orange is actually showing through quite nicely, giving us that variation from that first patch again. And where we've done it down here, again, you can see the orange coming through. But quite a nice rust effect, I feel. I think you could potentially enhance the effect if you did some, um, added some streaks in, potentially with like a contrast paint. Something like that just to kind of draw the attention because my main complaint with doing it this way is the edges are pretty hard because it's it dries very strange and it's not leaving like a, a particularly gentle edge there. 
And if we go back here where I tried to brush it away from where I put it, you still, it's better, but you've still got more of an edge there than I'm completely happy with. Which is a shame, because as I say, in the recesses here, I'm relatively happy. So, what I'm gonna try first of all, I'm gonna get my brush wet, wipe off from the majority of the water so it's just ever so damp. Then I'm gonna come back to these harsh lines here. Just try working the edge. See, it's hmm, pretty much erasing it there, isn't it? Can you see? It's just taking it straight off. Okay. So we're kind of undoing our hard work, if anything, there. Let's try on these edges here. Right. Let's go back to our old friend down here. Yeah. Taking most of that away as well. Let's try like maybe a, a circular motion on the edges. Try and even it out. But now look, before it's dried, it's looking like we've got quite a, a hard edge line there. Feathering doesn't seem to be doing much. Smearing it seems fairly ineffective too. But let's give that five and see what these two areas look like when it's completely dried, just to be fair. Now leaving it to dry hasn't made much of a difference to the, um, the effect. You can see there's like a tiny bit of pigment around where I kind of inadvertently erased it with my wet brush there but not much, we've still got a very hard edge. So, once you've made a mistake, it looks to, like it'll be uh, quite hard to undo it. The best result of going back in with a wet brush, again, was this patch here where I tried pushing it away from the edge while it was still wet, and I had that, that lighter tide mark left on there by the paint, and I've been relatively successful going back in with a brush, but Again, not something I'm super happy with. But it's all learning. Now down here, I've got a patch of kind of sponge chipping, which I'm pretty happy with. But again, I'm gonna see if I can enhance it by taking a brush with a relatively fine tip, normally reserved for stirring paint in my airbrush cup. And with some dirty down on the brush, I'm gonna try stippling with this fine brush within the established area, being a little bit more controlled than I was on that last test. And I'm hoping this will just create a little bit of variation in there and make these patches look a little bit less like Rhinox hide applied with a sponge, which they are. With the uh, Stippling with a fine brush dry. The most jarring part for me is how different the uh, the texture is. Now this scenery was varnished after I finished painting it. It was like a, it was a mix of like a matte or a satin um, spray varnish through the airbrush. And because the dirty down dries so matte, you can see there's there's quite a difference on both of these patches. Now I'd like to see how uh, Dirty Down settles in recesses with more traditional brushwork. So if you see down here, a little bit of orange in there. I'm gonna try just brushing into the recesses like that. Just working along in a line. See whether it'll settle more like traditional paint in a recess. Just try just brushing it in there. See how that looks. Now, looking at the result, I think I'll stick largely to uh, stippling when applying Dirty Down selectively. So that's looking uh, a little bit uniform. You see it's the same up here. I'd much rather have the um, slightly more irregular effect of the repeated uh, prods with the brush, at least with um, Dirty Down Neat. Perhaps if we, uh, since it is water soluble, if we water it down, 
we might get a different or more more pleasing result than, than we've got there. And come back in with our fat brush, just brush over the details on a couple patches. Haven't done much over the silver yet, so I'm going to do a few bits here. Go over these more textured vents, see how that goes. I've let it glob up a little bit there. I'll go back and do a lighter stipple patch over this as well. Look a little bit down here. Now, where I painted over these details up here, you can hopefully see this small patch had some typhus corrosion on there and it's looking pretty nice as it's gone over that. It's given it a, it's really enhanced the uh, heavy kind of rust effect there. So I'd like to do um, some more experiments with that. But in general, where I've applied Dirty Down more heavily with my fatter brush, same old thing we saw earlier. It's quite distinct where it's gone down and I personally don't really like the effect here on the uh, details on the vents. It's probably as good as it gets. So maybe if there's uh, details or something to kind of detract attention, it would be worthwhile putting it over that, experimenting further. I put some um, more concentrated patches down here on the um, metal paintwork and again, far too distinct where it's gone down, but I'd like to maybe thin some shades, get some contrast paints, bits like that, see if we can potentially use those to smooth the transitions. So I've taken a couple drops of Agrax Earth Shade, thinned it down with some Lamy Medium, and with my brush I'm going to go back to this patch I wasn't super happy with. I'm just going to kind of go over the edges here, so you can see it's breaking up the edge again quite distinctly. Since brushing it's moving it around a lot. I'm just gonna kind of dab it over these edges. Let's see if that can make it a wee bit more subtle. Now this is Agrax straight out the bottle. And I'm gonna do the same again. Try reactivating it that way. And finally, let's do the same with some Agaros dunes on these very unsubtle patches at the top here. It tends to stain a little bit more and feel more confident about this than the wash, to be honest. Looking at how the uh, tone of this looks immediately, I think Agaros Dunes was potentially a good brown to choose. Hmm. Let's leave all that to dry. And now, that's looking a little bit more subtle to me. So having the thinned shade and putting that around the edges worked right. I use Agrax, but I'd imagine you could do the same with um, Seraphine Sepia or another kind of dirty brown. That's worked surprisingly well, I feel, to kind of undo the um, slightly more unsightly parts of that rust. And the straight Agrax has worked all right as well. It's kind of dulled down the rust, made it look a little bit less, um, less of a rich reddy orange as well. And as predicted, the um, Agaros Dunes contrast paint around these vents on the top. To me, that's tied it together quite nicely. So I recommend a tone like that or a contrast paint that leaves more pigment behind than a wash. Potentially worth considering. Now, everything I've done so far has been applied with room temperature paint to my model. But according to the instructions on the back of the bottle, Dirty Down is best applied with warm paint to a warm model after a good shake. Over the course of filming this video, I tried comparing a room temperature and a warm application a couple of times, but to be honest, I couldn't see a ton of difference. If anything, I preferred the way the room temperature application dried, as the faster evaporating warm paint left more brush strokes. I was questioning my results so much, I did a super thorough application with a full five minute shaking of the pot, warmed the pot with a hairdryer, and heated the model until it was positively hot to the touch. As you can see, the result was much the same. I even applied some matte varnish to a different patch and tried again, 
just in case the finish that was currently on the model was working against me. Maybe I have a dud pot or maybe I'm missing something crucial. Whatever the case, I'm pretty confident that I can still find a use for Dirty Down in my hobby. Now you'll remember the Typhus Corrosion patch from my previous bit of scenery. It looks quite nice with Dirty Down over it, so I've uh, taken our shipping container friend, stippled on a lot of Typhus Corrosion, getting a little bit lighter and patchier up here, quite dense down here. And I'm going to do the same again, room temperature, just go over the whole thing, that kind of rough stipply motion, kind of relying upon the um, texture from the typhus and the irregularities from the brush strokes to hopefully give us something nice and interesting there as well. Over the typhus corrosion, I think we've got a pretty nice effect there. Obviously it's darker over the more intense patches where there's more texture to go into. We're looking lighter up here. I think if that was done over a large area, That'd be more than passable for scenery. At this point, I was curious to see if putting paint over dirty down rust was an option. I wanted to enhance the rust effect in recesses, so tried applying a little watered down scrag brown. I did this when the paint was touch dry and fully dry to see if this made a difference. In both cases, I wasn't overly impressed with the results. The water tends to react with the paint, giving it a sheen around the outside, and the pigment settles a little weird where it sits, rather than shrinking away into recesses. If you wanted to give your results a little more punch, I would recommend sticking to traditional edge highlights or a dry brush instead. Avoiding getting too much moisture involved with cured paint seems to be the key. Speaking of which, I had noticed that Dirty Down was reacting with water and some of my best results so far had been achieved with a damper brush. So I decided to try mixing the paint one-to-one -one with water and some other acrylic products to see what I ended up with. So. Let's take a little dirty down. Then roughly the same amount of water. Let's mix them up. I'm going to slap it onto this panel. It's mostly plain. I think this will be a good surface for it. As you can see, there's a bit of typhus on there as well. Just to see if it does do anything with the texture. But at this point, dirty down actually reacts a lot less in recesses of details and, and texture than I... Uh, I thought it would. And I'm going to do the same again with a shade. I've chosen Seraphin Sepia since its tone's kind of similar to the um, Agaros Dunes I had a decent result with before. I'm going to deliberately keep the uh, paint separate just in case we have any pigment traveling. And one last time with Agaros Dunes. And I'm quite intrigued to see how the um, properties of the contrast paints and dirty down rust kind of play off of each other. Now looking at the results, they're kind of varied. Um, I expected them to be a lot more similar just with different pigmentation, but the one with water has probably got arguably the best result. It's given us the, um, the greatest variation in colors and tones, certainly. I think if I'd have put this over a, a more interesting paint job than just silver wash and a bit of typhus, you could uh, create a very nice kind of heavily rusted effect. So kind of digging that one. Um, the one with the Seraphin Sepia shade, probably my second favorite. It's not looking particularly rusty, but it does look very dirty and grimy. I um, really do like that one. I could see using that as just a, an all over wash for something and then varnishing and uh, doing some work on top. I think that could work quite nicely. My least favorite is the, um, the contrast, weirdly, which is the one I had the most hope for. If you look, it's got a got a nasty looking sheen on it from the um, presumably from the contrast medium and slight like hazy almost um, so I don't think I'll be doing that again and the actual staining is quite a nice color but to me I can't see a, a circumstance where I'd take that finish over that finish voluntarily but certainly worth a try now to me the big takeaway from this experiment is how water affects how dirty down rust dries so this time I'm gonna take my janky brush and it's completely bone dry. Take the dirty down rust straight out of the pot and apply it. But out of interest, I'm going to also apply it onto this side. Just cover half of it because I'm gonna go back in with a wet brush, get some dirty down, apply them again, and see if that makes a difference. I'm gonna do this top half 
with the dirty down on water and see how they mingle in the middle. In addition to um, the paints hopefully mixing in the middle, I've also got a brush with just water on it. And I'm gonna put a couple speckles in that panel and this panel as well. We'll see how much of a difference that makes. And once it's dry, this is the result. As you can see, the um, when applied with a dry brush, it's very dark and not particularly interesting looking. And um, with the wet brush, I'm very, very pleased with the result. And the brush wasn't full of water, but I just kind of lightly wiped it across the tissue to, to remove most of it. So there was probably a drop or two in there. And having that mixed with the initial paint, it's come out very nicely. Um, obviously, I returned to the pot for this patch here. So there was presumably not as much water, but still very happy with how that looks. You can see where I put the uh, patches of water on there. I was hoping it would kind of dissipate and move around in the dried paint, but no such luck. Um, it looks like larger bits of water actually kind of work against getting a good effect because um, I really don't like how these lighter patches have turned out. I feel like I have a fairly solid understanding of how Dirty Down Rust works now. Creating and blending patches of rust is pretty simple, as is watering down the paint for nice looking fresh rust in recesses. When it comes to painting heavy rust, slapping dirty down over a textured surface, along with a little water, yields great results consistently too. Just make sure you are applying dirty down rust as the finishing touches to your project only, as painting over it is far from advisable and varnishing to protect your results is likely to undo all of your hard work. I hope you've enjoyed this longer video and this slightly different format. If you did, please do let me know with a like. If you want to see more from me, then subscribing and ringing a bell is definitely a thing too. But that's it for now. You can find links to hobby products I recommend down in the description, along with links to my other social presences as well. Here is my most recent video and another video that the gods of YouTube think you might enjoy. Thanks for watching, enjoy your hobby, and I'll see you next time. Take care.